Hey, welcome back to the course. So in the last video, we went ahead and installed our two tools that we're going to use for the lab. So we installed the HXD hex editor as well as the hash calculator. In this video, we're going to go ahead and actually um, pick some photos and then get those set up for the lab. And then in part three, we're going to go ahead and actually just analyze the photos. So this uh, part is going to be a little shorter um, just because I already have a couple photos that I'm going to use. Uh, but I'll show you what we're going to do in the lab. So step number one here, just make sure you're logged into uh, whatever Windows machine you're using, or if you're using Mac or Linux with um, a, some type of hex editor and a hash calculator, then uh, just follow along from that standpoint. We just want to open a web browser, and then uh, from there, you're just going to search for any photo that you want to use, right? So you could even just use a, a photo on your desktop of family or friends, um, or your pet or something like that. You can also just do a Google, Google search for any photos. Um, I'm actually going to skip step three. I'm going to um, just move on because I already have a couple photos. So I'm just going to pull up the photos that I have uh, in the folder here. So I picked um, this cat photo here, and then I've already actually made a modification to this one here. Um, but I'll go ahead and make another modification to the first one um, to sh kind of walk everybody through the lab. So let's go back to our lab document here. So our next step here in step four, once we find whatever photo that you want to use, again, you don't have to pick the one that I'm using. Step number four, we're going to double click on our hex editor, right? So that HXD editor. So let's go ahead and do that. So um, for me, I've installed it um, essentially twice. So I have two shortcuts, but they all go to the same spot. So if we double click, it's going to open it up to basically a gray box for us. All right, so once it opens for us here in step five, we're going to select here in step six, we're going to select file and then open. And then what that's going to do is give us a basically a box that we can navigate to wherever the photo it lives at. So whatever photo we chose, wherever that one is stashed at. So click file and then open. You'll see it's going to open that pop-up box for us. Um, for me, it defaults me into where I actually have the photo saved. In most cases, if you just downloaded the photo, it should take you to the downloads folder um, where that photo lives. So for me, I'm just going to click on the photo that I have not altered yet. I'll click on the original one is what this one is. And then I'll just say open there. So just follow along with that step. You'll see it's going to open uh, the uh, hex of the actual file. All right, let's go back to our lab document here. All right, so step number eight, yes, we do the file in the editor. Okay, um, so for example, if we use the JPEG file, which this one is, what we're going to see is that the hex here in step nine, the hex starts off with FFD8FF, which indicates a JPEG file. So if we click over there, you'll see FFD8FF here at the very top. So that indicates to us that that's a JPEG file. So um, very important if you decide to take the Computer Hacking Forensic Investigator exam through EC Council, that you uh, know your image files and basically know the hex um, that each one starts with. That's going to help you a lot on the examination. All right, let's go back to our lab document here. So now we're going to scroll to the very bottom of the, of the, uh, the hex editor uh, page, and we're just going to click on the text area. Once we do that, we're just going to type some type of a short word in there. So nothing extravagant at all, because if you type a long thing in there, it's going to actually change the size of the file. So um, very important step for us when we want to analyze these files in part three of the lab, um, we want them to actually be the same size, right? So um, if we type some, you know, 30, 30 character long phrase, that's going to modify the file size and we're not going to be able to actually complete part three. But if you just type something like, you know, the word password or like your first name or something like that, um, feel free to type whatever you want, but just try to make it some type of short word or phrase. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. So we're here, we're just going to scroll to the very bottom. So on the right side, we want to see like kind of the ending of all these random uh, characters here. All right, so you'll see we have it right there, the very end. So just go ahead and click after this very last character here. Just go ahead and click your mouse there. And then just start typing in there. So I'm just going to start typing the word password. All right, so we'll just type that in. Now, you may get a prompt asking you, um, uh, I forget exactly what it asks you, but uh, there is an option to make that go away. Basically, each time you type a character in, um, it gives you a prompt. Uh, I believe it says something along the lines of, hey, you know, just so you know, you're modifying data, you know, um, or this might change the hex values or it might change the file size. Um, there's some type of error message prompt it gives you. Um, again, I forget what it is because I, I have it uh, blocked on my particular virtual machine. Um, but there should also be a checkbox there that says, hey, I don't want to see this message again in some capacity. And then just check that box and you should be good to go um, for typing everything else in there. All right, let's go back to our lab document. 
so yes, we typed a short word. You saw I just typed the word password in there. Um, and I actually didn't follow my instructions. I didn't type the word test. I did the word password because um, I wanted to change it up a little bit. So here in step 12, we're just going to basically file and save as this uh, file and then just name it. Um, I'm going to name mine, as you'll see. I'll just name it uh, like cat3.jpg uh, to keep consistency. So once you've typed in whatever you want to, just go to file and save as. And then again, in my situation, I'm just going to change that one to a three just so I know which one I'm choosing. You can name that file whatever you want to. It does You don't have to name it the same thing as the original one. All right, just go ahead and click on save now. It's going to save that particular modification. All right, so if we go back to our lab document here, you'll see that we, yes, we did save the file. Um, and now we're going to move on to part three, where we actually go ahead and an analyze the file. So again, uh, here in part two of the lab, we basically just um, opened the file inside of our uh, hex editor, took a look at it, um, and then we, um, you know, uh, looked at it and noticed that, uh, at least in my example, it was a JPEG file. So I noticed that it was FFD8FF to start off the hex. Um, and then we also scrolled to the bottom right of the hex editor and added some information, whether that was our first name or like the word password or, you know, just a few characters, whatever the case might be. But our main goal there was we didn't want to modify um, the actual file size. All right, so in part three, again, of the lab, we're going to go ahead in the next video and actually analyze our files.